What up, players? It's Wallboss Tay up in this mode. Today we are going to be painting up this cave squig. Uh, it's the first stage, anyway, base coats and washes. So let me show you what colors I used Mephiston Red for the skin, Rack Hearth Flesh for the teeth and the claws, Nagaroth Knight for the gums, and Averland Sunset for the eyeballs. To wash it, we used Agrax Earth Shade as a shade for the claws, Non Oil for the mouth, and Caraberg Crimson for the skin. Very simple, these models are easy to paint and churn out very quickly. Um, if you want to just do a tabletop standard, the next thing you would do would just be to highlight back up to the base color once the shades are dry, and um, you could just put this guy on the table and have at it. Stay tuned for part two and I'll be doing a little bit more highlighting. We'll give him a nice fleshy colored underbelly. We will uh, highlight up the teeth and the gums and um, give him some little highlights on his, on his little warts and pimples there. And also work with the claws a little bit more. Some of the red shade is getting into his claws there. So uh, if, if you do not know what a squig is, if you're not familiar with them, they are like big, um, like overgrown, chompy fungus creatures. So they're like if if a mushroom growing in a cave all of a sudden got up on two feet and developed a mouth and all of a sudden started jumping up and down and chomping everything. So the night goblins, orcs and goblins, like to use them as war beasts, monsters that they can goad into combat, and they also. Um, squigs come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. These are attack squigs, but I think in the old books, the old army codexes, they used to talk about squigs that were bred specifically because they tasted good and they were used only for food because they didn't bite back. There were squigs that had these like hairy protrusions, like hair growing out of them. So uh, orcs would take them and put them on the back of their head and, and make them chomp them there so they would provide like hair. They were known as hair squigs. And uh, they were pretty much seen as kind of comedy relief for the orcs and goblins army. And they were an aesthetic that was uh, very pleasing and um, was a very funny and characterful thing that only Warhammer had. Only Warhammer has these squigs. And so they decided to keep running with it. And I think they've lost some of the, the comedy bits over the years as the newer editions and army books came out, but um, these attack squigs are always a common sight. So I'm, like you see, I'm going with the red standard Games Workshop color scheme, so anybody who has seen these before will recognize them when you paint them and put them out on the field. If you're interested, stay tuned for some alternate color schemes of squigs that I will also be doing, kind of like a, a bag of colorful Skittles candy, uh, squig tools, we'll call them. <laughs> So thanks for watching everybody, hope you enjoy this little tutorial and um, this is an appreciation video for Devil's Prodigy. I uh, am so happy that he did all of the um, entries for the July Painting Challenge this year, 2013, and he was such a great guy, so supportive, so encouraging, and he's doing a lot more with the hobby with his channel now, which I'm really stoked about, so go check him out, subscribe to him, and uh, give him a comment or a PM, let him know that you found him through me, if you have not already subscribed to him, and wish him the best. Stay tuned for more. July Painting Challenge loot appreciation videos as the weeks roll on, and thanks for watching. What up, players? It's Wallboss Tay up in this mud. Today, we are going to paint up a squig for the Warhammer Fantasy Orcs and Goblins army. So the first thing I did was I based my little squiggy using some gravel, I just glued it on, and then I sprayed the whole thing with some duplicolor matte gray primer. You can also use white. I would suggest against using black, but a gray to a white primer would be fantastic. First color we're going to use is Mephiston Red. So, continuing on from where I left off in my unboxing of these cave squigs, I suggest that if you have not gone to Devil's Prodigy that you go to his channel right now 
and you subscribe. He is a classic guy, very classy guy, I mean, and he's um, really, really nice and super awesome, and he's got great feedback and insight. His uh, Savage Orcs look very, very nice. I remember when I painted up my Savage Orcs, I had a lot of time, a lot of fun experiences painting those guys up. It was, it was a joy. They're one of the newer kits to be released for the Orcs and Goblins range, and uh, they had been redone from the old metal models, and they just looked really, really beautiful. As you can tell, I'm using a big brush, not really caring too much about where all the paint goes, just want to make sure that it gets on all of the skin. Red has always been a classic color for squigs in the Warhammer Fantasy and, and 40k range because on the color spectrum, red and green are just across from each other. I think that's right. Uh, all you art majors out there will know better than I do, but I think that's why you see a lot of color schemes and a lot of things painted green with red accents. And there's, ta-da! Thanks for watching, everybody. No. <laughs> um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of a more detail-capable brush, and we're going to paint on the gums, the gummy gum gums. And the paint we're going to use for this. Nagaroth Knight. While I'm looking for that, I'm making sure I have all the other paints that I'm going to need. The uh, cool thing about squigs that I've always loved about them is that they're basically just like teeth. They're like a big mouth with little legs. And um, I just think that is hilarious. So Nagaroth Knight is a deep, dark purple. And it is perfect for squig gums. Oh, I see a bit of flash. Fine cast. I always wanted to do a heavy squig themed army. There are these units, if you've never played with and don't really know, aren't, aren't familiar with the Orcs and Goblins army, there, there's a unit called squigs, squig hoppers. So the squig herders, although they just push them and con coax them to go forward into battle, there's this unit of just buck crazy night goblins that just, all they do is run forward Right, and they jump on top of some cave squigs and then they <laughs> they rush forward and bounce into the enemy and I think that that is one of the most hilarious images in my head for a for a unit in Warhammer Just squigs bouncing forward with night goblins barely hanging on in the back right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint in the teeth and for that, we're going to use Rackart Flesh. So, where did I put my 
Rack hearth. Often touted as the new Deneb stone, I still do not believe that, but it is. It's a, it's a decent substitute. So I'm gonna give Nagroth Knight a little bit more time to to set. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna take my Rakarth flesh and I'm going to paint up the big claws. Now, as always, I thin my paints in a wet palette, and if your Mephiston Red has not dried yet, if it still looks kind of shiny, you want to avoid painting it at this stage because you don't want the bone color of Rakkar Flesh to mix with the red color of Mephiston Red. It'll create a very ugly pink color. So. Let's give it a little bit more time if you see that, oh, the Mephiston Red is still drying, and just come back to it later. Cave squigs gotta be, I mean, I think orcs and goblins are, like you look at all the new stuff coming out for Warhammer Fantasy, the Dark Elves that just came out, even when you look back to the, like the High Elves especially, and before them you had stuff like the uh, Empire, Warriors of Chaos, everything has very, very potentially difficult paint schemes attached to them. You know what I mean? Um, goblins, orcs and goblins, squigs, they've always been kind of marketed as the beginner's army, both for playstyle and in painting. Even though there are some special rules like animosity, um, orcs and goblins has always been kind of seen as the uh, beginner army. That's why in, traditionally they have always been more often than not in the starter box set for both Warhammer Fantasy and 40k. They're a horde army, which means you... Uh, GW loves them because in order to play them effectively, you will want to get a big collection of these guys. You can see I just dragged my brush across the teeth. So n nothing fancy there. In fact, I got some on the gum line, so I'm gonna go back to my Nagaroth Knight now, and I'm going to just fix any of the mistakes that I had made. Squigs. Squigs are one of the iconic Warhammer only things that the developers, marketing people really can grab onto. Like um, some other things that pop to mind are, for example, dwarf berserkers or dwarf slayers, troll slayers. You don't see those in other game systems, or if you do, they're called something else, like uh, Berserkers. You do not see Night Goblins in other fantasy games. You do not 
the black orcs. I think a lot of what Warhammer was able to do was take familiar Dungeons and Dragons or JRR token creations and give them interesting, fun, new uh, like ways of of visioning them on the battlefield. All right, you might want to go a couple layers, but I'm gonna stop after the first one. I'm gonna let this dry for a while, and then I'm gonna come back with. You want two washes. You want Karaberg Crimson and Agrax Earthshade. So once this little guy is dry, we'll come back and continue with the second part of the video. All right, we're gonna continue with Averland Sunset for the eyeballs. something like that. Next we're going to uh, hit the teeth and we're going to use, I said, I think I, I, I said uh, Agrax Earthshade. That's only going to be for the skin and the claws though. Let's use known oil for this gaping jaw. I think that should work. The great thing about Known Oil is that if you use like a white primer to undercoat your squig miniatures with, then the Known Oil will get into all those crevices between the teeth and shade them very nicely. we're going to take uh, Grax Earthshade and I'm going to use these for the claws. Giant Hanna-Barbera cartoony claws on his feet. Kind of look like big mutant guppies or tadpoles. <laughs> so cute. There we go. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do at this stage is hit this bad boy with some Karaberg Crimson. Beautiful red wash. It's, I think it's actually much better than the old, what was it, Baal Red wash. This wash actually has a little bit of purple into it. So it makes it really dark and not just, not just red, but it's uh, got, yeah, it's got this darker hue to it that looks really, really nice when painted on red models. So it shades it really nicely, makes it really good. You could also use Agrax Earthshade for red, which I think is an interesting choice, but is certainly an option. If you don't have Karaberg Crimson, if you only have Agrax Earthshade, it's, that is definitely all right.
And there you go, quick and easy first stage base coats and shades. Stay tuned because in part two of how to paint a squig, cave squig, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the claws back up. We're going to highlight the skin. We're actually going to add a little bit of a pinkish or flesh colored underbelly and just to give it some, some differentiation. And then, um, and then we'll do some final highlights. We'll uh, also color in these pimples here and warts and then you will have a painted up squig. We'll also highlight the teeth and the gums. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.